What's up, boys? First call of the day, walking cooler down. Plain is with 68 degrees here. This whole thing's down. Um, got my gauges on. You can see we got pressure here. All right. My pressure control is calling. I also tested it with my meter. Um, but what I'm getting here is, you know, if you guys can see this, try to do this one handed. We got our voltage here, our line voltage. We got our 460 volt, but we have no control voltage. See, none of our service mates lit up the clock. We have no voltage on our low pressure control lines. Um, these are our control circuit fuses right here. You can see we got the 460 at the top, but coming out, we have nothing. So, sorry, I can't do this one handed, but believe me, there's nothing there. So, one or two of those fuses is blown. Um, this place is notorious for losing power too. We'll get power surges when that happens. You can blow these fuses, but I'm gonna put pop a couple in and see what happens. So make sure you shut power off, guys, especially anything. And then I'm dealing with 460 here too, so get your little stubby screwdriver in here. This little Klein stubby, the multi stubby, these things are awesome, especially for tight areas like this to get in here to get something like this done. It's the only thing you can get in here, really. So. Very good little screwdriver, guys. If you don't have one of these, I think they're fairly short money, too. I think it was only, I don't know, 10 or 12 bucks. But you got everything on a flathead Phillips, different sizes on each end, and you got a quarter inch and 5 sixteenths nut driver on this as well. So, indeed, guys, these two fuses were bad, so I happen to have a couple 1.5 amp fuses in my truck. I popped them in. Um, and as you can see, I don't know if you can read that. We're drawing at 1.1 amps there, 1.2 there. So we're drawing under amps and what it's calling for. So I am thinking they had a power issue here. Like I said, this is, this whole area is very notorious for that, especially in the summer. So we got them running now. We're going to pump this one right here. Pressure's a little high. We also got to remember it's hot out and we have a big heat load on this box right now. So as the box temp lowers, our pressures will also lower on our suction and discharge pressures. All right, boys, what's up? So I know that first call wasn't much, but that was just, um, um, that place, that whole area is notorious. Um, especially in the summer, they have power surges and brownouts and things like that. So that's what tripped out those fuses. I watched that thing for a while, pulled down to temp, everything was fine. Like I said, the whole whole area is notorious for that. And they had a big lightning storm, too, a couple days ago we did. So it went out during that. So I know that's what caused that. So there really wasn't much of that first call. All right, but now uh, for the second one, I'll be um, installing an oil pressure control on a semi-hermetic compressor on a heat craft unit. So that one will be up next. Figured I'd just combine these two videos for you guys. Right, boys, hope you can hear me. It's kind of loud here. Um, this is a unit I'm going to change out an oil pressure control on place is nice. Park my truck right there. Units are on the ground. Uh, but we got a bad um, old Centronic control here. You guys can see that with the light. Uh, we're going to be changing it out. This is a new style now. We're going to be putting one of these in. New sensor for it where your plug goes. I have a feeling on this old one the sensor is all plugged. And that's why it's not reading right. No, I'm going to be throwing one of these in. I'll show you guys how to do it. I don't know how to check oil pressure on a uh, semi-hermetic compressor like this. I'll show you. you. You hook up one side to your suction side um, and one up to your oil pump to get your oil pressure. And you subtract the difference. So whatever your oil pressure is, you subtract the suction pressure. And whatever the, the remainder is, the, the difference between those two, that is your oil pressure. I already know my oil level's good in this compressor. We're about three quarters full. Um, and this thing, I guess, just keeps tripping off. I wasn't the original tech here, but I know this control's bad. That's why it's doing it. Oh, this screen is clogged in this. Um, in the sensor here. So, if you see that, we got about 70 on the oil pressure. Such as coming up a little. 75. 75, 80, and 25. So just say, say 80 minus 25. What's that? 55? 
So, yeah, that, that means our oil pressure is fine. That means our oil pump is working. There's nothing wrong with the impellers or anything in here in our pump. First off, guys, I'm starting. I'm going to pump down my system. Closing off the outlet to my receiver just to pump down the system. So that just tripped out on oil. And it's not. And I, we, we can see right there that our oil pressure is fine. So something definitely going on with this control. So I'm going to let it pump down to get all the freon out of the compressor, our suction side way down like the zero or whatever, to get the pressure out of here. So when we open up our system, when we take our sensor out, we won't start blasting Freon and oil out all over the place. You can see now, guys, I got to pump down to zero. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to close my discharge service valve and my suction service valve, and that will close off the refrigeration lines, suction and discharge, so our compressor will be completely isolated. So then we can open up, open up the back here when we take out that sensor plug in there. But that will completely isolate this from the system. This will be all by itself. All this stuff will be blocked off. All the all the refrigeration lines. Well, we got everything pumped out. Everything's isolated, guys. You can see the valves. Um, what we have to do next. You got to unplug your plug here off of the sensor. This sensor is a nut here. It's hard to see in here. I got to try to grab that to get that out. Sometimes these can be a real nightmare to try to get those out. Um, if I can't get a wrench on it at a good enough angle to get that out of there, I'm gonna have to. You know, just take this all apart, take this whole electrical section here, unscrew it all and take it all out of the way and move it so I can get a wrench in there um, to get that sensor out. See how it is, you gotta, there's like the nut for it right there. You gotta grab it around this and get this whole thing out. Get my wrench in here and get this thing loosened enough. That was a miracle. Usually half the time that doesn't happen. But anyway, when you put these back in guys, it's very, very important. This comes with a new O-ring. That O-ring is going to go around here and it's going to sit in this little groove. And it also comes with this washer. This has to go on here as well. You know, so be on here like that. You know, that will be on first. And then we put our O-ring on. We'll put a little oil around it. But that's how you go. It's very important. You've got to have this washer and this O-ring or these things will leak. Okay, guys, so I got the new one in. Um, they don't have to be cranked and they got to be in tight, but you don't have to totally kill yourself getting them in. But this is what I wanted to show you. Hope you guys can see this okay. I don't know with the light, um, but you see this screen? The screen's all clogged. It's all dirty. Okay? It's all dirty. And it's filled a little bit of debris. That's why if these get clogged up and restricted, guys, it won't read your oil pressure right. So that's what's wrong with this thing, which is what I pretty much thought it was. So. Uh, we're going to change out the rest of the control with it as well, just so everything's brand new. The customer wants it all done, so that's what we're going to do. Change out the control part here, guys. Um, so what I did, we have two blue wires here, which are on M and L. I put an orange piece of tape around the M wire, just so I know what it is, so I don't get them confused. Green's our ground, and here's our yellow for our line for our 240 volts. So I'm going to take a picture as well. I'll write it down, whatever you got to do to make sure you don't mess up the wires. Okay, always do that. Take a picture or draw a picture. Because um, <clears throat> you never know. Never know. All you got to do is screw up one and then you end up with a headache. Inside here where that control is on the other side, you can't see, but this, see those two little screws? Those go in this side through here. I usually take my little stubby screwdriver, nut driver, and just get those out so we can get the control um, out of the electrical panel here. It's a lot bigger. It's a different shape. So what I did was I knocked out this knockout down here. And believe it or not, this will fit in here. I gotta maneuver it around a little. I may have to lower this or make that knock out a little bigger, but this will fit in here flush, and, my, and our wires will still reach um, to all our connection points. It in there, it wasn't fitting right and didn't look good, so I figured I'd just move it out here. I drilled another hole underneath and everything to bring the wires through to go up into this thing, and now there's plenty of room to work on it and all that. After this, I'm going to secure this up. I already vacuumed out the compressor, opened up my lines. Always remember, don't start it unless, it's, especially this discharge valve, that's got to be open. Suction lines open. So I'm just going to secure this, neaten up some more wires in here. And that will be ready to go in a couple minutes. She'll fire up when she starts calling again. That is the tester out. We're going to open up our receiver tank. Let the gas get through the system again. Come on, any second now. Here we are. Off and running. Now we know everything works. I'm gonna need uh, everything up, secure these wires, pump this thing up, and we'll be out of here. All right.
right, so what's up, guys? Oh, it's been a long week. Um, I filmed this video yesterday on the second. Today's the third, so I'm trying to get it up today for you guys. Been real busy the last last week, week and a half, so pretty tired. But I want to mention about the video with the, um, the oil control. First off, when I was saying where my red hose was hooked up on the high side, it's really not the high side, but I was just using that to get a reading, so we only had to use one set of gauges, but. That's um, your oil pump pressure at your crankcase. So on your oil pump, not your oil pressure. You take your suction pressure and the measurement at your oil pump, and then you subtract the suction pressure from the pressure at your pump, and that is what gives you your oil pressure. So I did make a mistake in that video. Sorry, I was hot out there and dying and trying to get this done for you guys. And um, the second thing is with that screen on that sensor, how that was plugged up, that was... When those get plugged up, they won't read the right PSI, so they will read that the oil pressure is low even when it's not. So that will make, you know, obviously the thing, think you have low oil pressure or no oil in the system or something, so it shuts the system off. So that's how that works. Um, any other questions, guys, feel free to put them in the comments. I know I kind of rushed these two videos, but I had some interest in them from a post I put up, so... Sometimes it's hard to get stuff in the field too, guys. You know, I, I can't film everything. I start working and then I miss things and forget to add them. But I appreciate you guys sticking with me and hope everyone enjoys their fourth. And, you know, hopefully you guys got time to relax and all that. And like I said, I appreciate everything again, guys. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do, and for those of you that are already here, hit that bell notification. Uh, you'll know right when I put up a video. So, again, guys, thanks for everything. Hope... Hope these videos I'm doing helps you guys. And, you know, enjoy, enjoy your holiday, boys, while you can. All right? I catch you boys in the next one.